Hey everyone. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're diving into a dark and intriguing what-if scenario. What if Deku's mother, Inko Midoriya, was tortured? How would this tragic twist reshape Deku's journey? Join me as we explore part 1 of this intense alternate reality. Let's get started. We see Izuku Midoriya getting out of bed to go to school, but he has a sad look on his face because his classmates bully him for being quirkless. Son, it's time for school. Inko shouts from the living room. I'm coming, mom. I'm just finishing up, Izuku replies as he puts on his uniform. It doesn't even make sense to study, Izuku thinks sadly. Slash at school slash. Izuku is sitting in the corner of the classroom, one of the first to arrive. For now, everything is fine. He tells himself while watching the door. But his happiness doesn't last long as his friend enters the room. Bakugo starts causing explosions at Izuku's desk. You piece of trash, isn't the beating we gave you yesterday enough, or do you want another? He says threateningly, sending a shiver down Izuku's spine. Kachan. I didn't mean to offend you, Izuku says, his voice and body trembling. Just your presence offends anyone, Deku, Bakugo says, grabbing Izuku by the neck. You're just a piece of trash. Even trash is better than you, he throws Izuku against the wall. This hurts. M, I'm sorry, Kachan, Izuku says, grabbing his backpack. I'm leaving, and I'm sorry for what happened. He tries to leave, but Bakugo stops him. You're not going anywhere until you get what you deserve. Bakugo and his friends start hitting Izuku until he collapses on the floor, badly hurt. Let's go. This one isn't even good as a punching bag, Bakugo and his friends leave the classroom, leaving Izuku badly injured on the floor. My whole body hurts. Why? Why me? I'm so weak. I can't even throw a punch. I'm so weak, Izuku tries to get up but falls to his knees, tears streaming from his eyes. My whole body hurts. I'd rather die than live another day like this, but I promised my mom I'd be a hero, he gets up, badly hurt, and limps home. Slash at home slash. Izuku tries to hide his wounds from his mother. I'm home. He says, taking off his shoes and trying to get to his room quickly, but his mother appears in front of him. Hi, son. I'm making your favorite meal. I hope you enjoy it, she says with a smile, not noticing that her son is hurt. Thanks, mom, Izuku says, quickly going to his room. I wish I had a quirk to show I'm strong, he lies down on the bed. Tomorrow will be another tough day. Slash the next day at school slash. Slash slash classroom slash slash. Today, I brought brochures for you to see which career you want to choose since this is the second to last year before university. But who am I kidding, everyone wants to be a hero. Everyone stands up, showing off their quirks and bragging. Sensei, how dare you put me in the same category as these others? Bakugo says arrogantly, making the rest of the class feel insulted. Actually, Bakugo, you said you'd apply to UA, but there's someone else who wants to join too, and that's Izuku, the teacher says seriously, looking at some papers. Everyone turns to look at Izuku, and he starts to tremble. Suddenly, everyone, including the teacher, starts laughing. Bakugo creates explosions in his hand to intimidate Izuku. Don't make me laugh, you piece of trash. You're worse than these extras. You're just scum, he says, grabbing Izuku by the neck, but the teacher intervenes. Enough, Bakugo. If you're going to fight, this isn't the place, the teacher says. Bakugo releases Izuku and looks at the teacher angrily. Slash after class slash. Izuku runs out and bumps into Bakugo, causing his books to scatter. Bakugo looks confused and sees Izuku picking up his books. Ha, you worthless scum. You can't even walk straight. You're just a cockroach, Bakugo mocks. Izuku bends down to pick up his things. Sorry, Kachan, he says. He suddenly notices his quirk analysis book and becomes anxious. Years of work might be destroyed in seconds. I have to grab it before Kachan sees it. Izuku reaches out quickly, but it's too late. Bakugo's friend steps on the book. Let's see what we have here, the friend says, picking up the book while Izuku watches sadly. What's this crap, ha ha, Bakugo, the friend laughs, showing Bakugo the book. Bakugo reads a bit and his face shows anger. What the hell is this? Quirk analysis for the future hero? His friends start laughing. Listen up, Deku, and I hope this is clear, if you get in my way, I'll kill you. He uses his explosions to burn the book. Now you're scum, and get lost, he says, throwing the book out the window. If you want a quirk, jump off a building and try in the next life, he finishes with a scowl. 
Izuku tries not to cry, trembling, and just picks up the last of his things from the floor before leaving. Izuku walks around the school, thinking about Kachan's words, maybe he's right, but I promised my mom I'd be a hero who changes this society, he looks at a fish pond and sees his partially burned and chewed up book, damn, damn, this isn't food. This is years of work, he clenches his fists and sheds a few tears, I just need to keep going. Just keep going, he picks up what's left of the book and leaves. Slash meanwhile, in the city center slash. A sludge monster is causing chaos in the city center, taking advantage of the absence of heroes to steal and destroy everything in its path. Where are the heroes? A civilian asks. They'll come and deal with that thing, a woman says angrily, watching the monster. Ha ha ha, don't make me laugh. No one can beat me, the monster mocks. But suddenly, the hero All Might appears. Don't worry, you know why? Because I'm here. All Might says with his characteristic smile. It can't be. It's All Might. A surprised citizen exclaims. He's going to teach you a lesson, you disgusting creature, a man says with a mocking tone toward the monster. Everyone starts laughing at the sludge monster as All Might approaches. Damn. I have to run, or it'll be my end. The monster starts fleeing at full speed, but All Might chases after it. Izuku is walking home with his head down and wanting to cry. He's so lost in his thoughts that he doesn't notice the sludge monster has appeared behind him. Your body looks weak. But it'll still make a good vessel, the monster says, emerging from a sewer. Izuku instantly turns his head towards the monster and starts trembling. Stay away from me. A hero will come and defeat you. Izuku tries to run for his life, but it feels like his feet are stuck in the ground. His fear is so overwhelming that his body won't respond. Ha ha ha, the monster laughs mockingly. Why would anyone help a weakling like you? The monster quickly lunges at Izuku, who doesn't even notice it's on top of him. Don't worry, it'll only hurt for 45 seconds, it says, starting to engulf Izuku in its slime. Izuku tries to get rid of the slime, but it's useless. He just waits for his end. The rest will be peace and quiet. Am I really going to die like this? Struggling against the monster, I'm so sorry, mom. I won't be able to keep my promise, his vision starts to blur until a muscular figure appears and starts laughing. Ha ha ha, don't worry, kid. Extending his hand and forming a fist. Because I'm here. Texas smash. All Might delivers a powerful punch into the air, creating a massive gust of wind towards the monster. What the hell, the monster thinks, trying to hold on so it doesn't get blown away, just one punch in the air. What power, the monster can't withstand it and explodes, sending Izuku flying unconscious. Hey, kid, wake up. All Might slaps Izuku's face. Wake up, kid. Izuku reacts but wakes up confused. Uh. What happened? He looks around, feeling like his head might explode. Where am I? Then he sees the muscular figure in front of him and recognizes it. Hey, All Might? Izuku leaps up in excitement. Ha ha, sorry kid for getting you involved in my fight, All Might says, a bit embarrassed. It's okay, All Might, but give me your autograph. Where's my notebook? Izuku searches frantically. No one will believe this. The number one hero just saved me. Calm down, kid. All Might takes out a notebook. I think this is yours. I read it, and it seems very interesting. Izuku's eyes widen with excitement. I have to go now. Remember to support me on social media and fight for the good, All Might says, turning his back to Izuku and preparing to jump away, but Izuku stops him. Wait, All Might. Can I ask you a question? All Might turns to look at the green-haired boy. Sure, kid. I'm all ears, the hero responds. Can I be a hero? Even if I don't have a quirk? Can I be like you? Smile at the world. And say everything is okay. Because I'm here? Izuku lowers his head, waiting for the hero's answer. A silence forms for a few seconds. Izuku feels embarrassed, while the hero has a serious expression. Kid. Being a hero means risking your life, no matter what. We're always at risk, but we have quirks to help us with our daily work. I'm sorry to crush your dreams, but for your own good, I have to say no. I see it as almost impossible, better yet, impossible. But you can still be a hero in another way, like a police officer, doctor, or detective. You might not have the same spotlight as a hero, but you'll still be fighting for good, the hero responds. He speaks honestly, but for Izuku, it feels like his heart has been stabbed. It's as if half of his life has disappeared. All Might. Thank you for your answer. 
Izuku says, struggling to hold back tears, his hair covering his eyes. I'm really sorry, kid. All Might leaps up high and notices a hole in his pocket. He catches a falling bottle, that was close. I don't know if I was too harsh with that kid. I just said what seemed right at the moment, All Might thinks but suddenly starts coughing up blood. Damn. It's time, he lands on the rooftop of a building. Izuku is crying uncontrollably in his room. His mother is at work, and he doesn't know what to do. Thoughts flood his mind. Piece of trash. I'm sorry, son. I'm so sorry. You're just scum. Sorry, kid, you can't be a hero. And what now? My number one hero just told me. I can't be a hero. I'm doomed to be useless. Just a Deku, he says to himself as his tears increase. Slash the next day slash. Slash in class slash. Izuku appears very down. There's no life in his eyes as if all hope has vanished, and the whole class notices, as if something in his life has been destroyed. Damn nerd. What are you thinking about? Bakugo grabs Izuku by the collar. Izuku just lowers his head, making Bakugo angrier. Damn piece of trash, answer me while I'm talking to you, Bakugo says, making explosions with his hand. Kachan, if you're going to hit me, do it. Half of my world died yesterday, Izuku says coldly and seriously. Bakugo feels a shiver hearing these words. He no longer sees the old Deku, who was fearful but cheerful and full of hope. Now he sees someone who seems to want to die. Bakugo releases Deku and turns away. What happened to him? Bakugo is shocked by Deku's attitude. Izuku remains silent. Slash somewhere in Japan, laboratory slash. A doctor who has been watching Izuku for several days says. Perfect. Yes, that kid is ideal for my experiment, the doctor starts laughing. Suddenly, a television turns on and a voice that sounds like a demon starts speaking. Doctor, how's the project going? A chilling voice asks. Everything is going perfectly, the doctor replies. I just need that kid, he says, pointing to a camera showing Izuku. Consider it done. I'll bring him tomorrow. I hope the Nomu Number no. Zero project works. It's a project I've been working on for years, and I finally got the perfect formula, the doctor says, holding up the formula. This formula is deadly if the body isn't perfect, it grants many quirks. That Nomu will help us change this society, and we will come out of hiding and become powerful. Ha ha ha. The television turns off. Slash back with Izuku slash. Izuku is lying in bed, thinking about his future. What will I do if my dreams are shattered? Maybe All Might is right, being a police officer doesn't sound too bad after all. I hate my life, he closes his eyes to sleep, tomorrow will be another day. Slash the next day slash. Slash at school slash. Izuku is sitting at his desk, working on his homework when an explosion occurs near his seat. He looks up and sees who it is, although he already knows. You piece of trash, I don't know what's happened to you, but you'll pay for ignoring me yesterday, Bakugo says, grabbing Izuku by the neck. Damn scum, why don't you just die already? He throws Izuku against the wall, causing him to spit a little blood. Damn nerd, Bakugo starts hitting him all over. Why? Izuku whispers. What did you say, nerd? Bakugo grabs his neck and hits him in the face. If you're going to kill me, just do it, Izuku says, blood coming from his nose. Bakugo releases him and leaves the classroom, leaving Izuku severely injured and on the verge of passing out. Why don't I just die already? Izuku mumbles as he loses consciousness. Slash six hours later slash. Izuku wakes up, still in pain. He checks the time, it's 9 p.m. Damn, I'm going to worry my mom. I need to get home fast. He tries to stand but collapses again due to his injuries. Damn, my whole body hurts. Kachan really went too far this time. I need to be strong, there's still someone who cares about me. Struggling to get up, Izuku slowly makes his way home. When he arrives, he notices the door is open. Huh? The door is open. My mom must be really worried about me. He opens the door and is shocked to see blood in the kitchen. Why is there blood in the kitchen? He says in fear. There are drops leading to my mom's room, he walks towards the room, every sense telling him to leave. Izuku stands in front of his mother's room. He slowly opens the door and sees a scene he will never forget, his mother is tied to the bed with signs of torture. Izuku is breathless and goes into deep shock. He loses his balance and falls to the ground. No, 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 this can't be real, his body starts to tremble. Suddenly, 
he hears footsteps approaching. The door to Izuku's room opens, and two men enter. One is dressed in a butcher's outfit with several knives, and the other is well dressed. Who are you? Izuku instinctively tries to back away but remains on the floor. Is it him? asks the man in the butcher's outfit. Yes, it's him. The well dressed man approaches Izuku. I apologize for the manner of our meeting. I'm Jack, and this is my partner, the butcher. Nice to meet you, Izuku. Jack says with a hint of politeness. Izuku Midoriya was in shock, teetering on the edge. In front of him were two strangers, one called Jack, wearing a formal suit with his face hidden by the night, and another known as Butcher, dressed in a sleeveless shirt, metal gloves, and an apron. Butcher's appearance was bulky, but his face was also concealed. Who? Who are you? Izuku shouted, trembling on the ground. Did you? Did you kill my mother? He cried, shedding a few tears. Can you be quiet? People are trying to sleep. Butcher said, holding two knives. We were just bored and wanted some fun, he continued, stepping forward. The moonlight revealed a disturbing smile on his face. Sorry about your mother, kid, Jack interrupted his partner. Jack had always been polite, but villains are often shaped by society. Jack wasn't an exception, his parents were killed by a hero, and he was mistreated by his family, especially his uncle and aunt, who were the first he killed at age 14. He never stole, he only killed for money. However, he had a special ability to see beyond a person's exterior, sensing their inner self. It's clear she cared for you, but we're not here to talk about her. We're here for you, Jack said, pointing at Izuku. And we never fail at our job. Why me? I don't have a quirk. Izuku tried to get up, but fear kept him pinned to the ground. Poor kid, you've clearly suffered a lot. We were hired to kidnap you, and like my partner said, we never fail, Jack said approaching Izuku with a syringe in hand. Summoning his courage, Izuku bolted for the door. Butcher quickly threw a knife, hitting Izuku's left thigh. Despite the pain, Izuku continued, but now with a knife in his foot. He screamed in agony, yet adrenaline kept him running. This confirms my analysis. Izuku Midoriya, you have a big heart and are brave enough to risk your life for a stranger. Unfortunately, we were hired to kidnap you, Jack thought raising his left hand while keeping the other behind his back. The pressure around them changed, signaling that Jack's quirk was active. Izuku was just five steps from the door when he felt a crushing force on his shoulders, causing him to collapse. Jack stepped forward. My power controls pressure on objects and people. I can crush a target or an area up to 10 meters. I could crush you here if I wanted, but our employers want you alive and as intact as possible, he explained. Butcher approached Izuku and stabbed him in the shoulder making him scream in pain. Are you deaf? I said intact, not this unnecessary brutality, Jack said, annoyed, as he continued to apply pressure. TSK. Butcher took out a syringe and looked at Izuku. Sweet dreams, kid, he said, injecting Izuku in the neck. Slowly, Izuku felt the pain fade and fell asleep. Slash slash two hours later slash slash. Slash slash Katsuki's house slash slash. The Katsuki family was eating dinner. Mitsuki Bakugo, Bakugo's mother, was best friends with Inko Midoriya since childhood. They supported each other a lot. Bakugo's father, Masaru Bakugo, was watching the news when suddenly. Reporter, good evening. At this very moment, a house is burning uncontrollably. Some heroes and firefighters are trying to put out the flames, but they are getting stronger. We have just reported that Inko Midoriya and Izuku Midoriya were inside the house. Mitsuki Bakugo's mind went blank. She quickly grabbed her bag and ran to the scene. Bakugo was also in shock, remembering that the last thing he did to his childhood friend was to beat him until he was unconscious. The whole Bakugo family went to the scene. Slash slash Midoriya's house slash slash. After 20 minutes of fighting the fire, the flames were finally out. The first to arrive at the crime scene was Detective Tsukuchi. Nobody should enter, this might be a crime scene and could be contaminated, he said. The house was completely destroyed, with only two blackened shapes visible. Damn! Who could have started the fire? This can't be an accident, the flames look like gasoline. They must have been hiding something, he thought while looking around. Suddenly, a woman screamed and tried to get through. Let me pass, she cried, but a police officer held her back. I know this family. Inko Midoriya was my best friend, she said, on the verge of tears. The detective, observing from a distance, decided to approach her. Hello, ma'am. Are you a relative of them? Tsukuchi asked, removing his hat. 
Yes. Yes, I am. My name is Mitsuki. Are they okay? Tell me they are. Please, she sobbed. The detective lowered his head. I'm sorry, ma'am. Neither the mother nor the son survived. I still need to figure out what happened. I must investigate deeply, he thought. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Mitsuki, upon hearing this, collapsed on the ground, crying. Her husband, Masaru, knelt beside her to comfort her, while Bakugo stood in shock. I am truly sorry. My colleague will take you to the police station, if you allow it, Tsukuchi said. The Bakugo family nodded. All right. Colleague. Tsukuchi called his partner, who approached and stood beside him. Yes, sir? The partner said, standing at attention. Take the lady and her family to the police station for questioning, Tsukuchi instructed, then whispered to his partner, and get DNA tests for the two bodies, but don't let anyone know. Understood? Understood, sir. Family, please follow me to the police station, the partner said. The Bakugo family got into the police car while Mitsuki continued to cry. But what happened in those two hours before? After knocking out Midoriya, Jack took his body and placed him in a car where he treated his injuries. Jack removed Midoriya's shirt to tend to the shoulder wound. Wow, kid, it's clear you've suffered a lot in life, he said, noticing the multiple scars and burns on Midoriya's body. Poor kid. I'm surprised by you. It's rare to see someone like you. I even feel bad for doing this, Jack said as he cleaned the shoulder wound. While Butcher placed another fake body and spread gasoline throughout the house, he lit a cigarette. After finishing it, he threw it away, and the house caught fire. He got into the car and saw Izuku, who was bandaged and tied up. He nodded to Jack, and they left the scene. Slash slash present time slash slash. Slash slash abandoned warehouse slash slash. Jack and Butcher were resting in the car, waiting for their contact to arrive. Suddenly, a purple portal appeared, and a figure emerged, covered in a cloak with hands on it. The portal transformed into a man with yellow eyes and a purple body. Hello, I'm Shigaraki, and I'm here for the package, he said with a smile. And my companion is Kurogiri, he added, pointing to the mentioned person. Hello, gentlemen, Shigaraki greeted with a nod. I don't care who you are. Just give us the money, and we'll give you the package, Butcher said. First, let me see the package to ensure it's still alive and in good condition, Jack said. He opened the trunk of the car, revealing the unconscious Midoriya, bandaged on his leg and shoulder. We've done our part. We brought him alive and in the best condition possible, Jack said calmly. Shigaraki was silent for a moment. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the money, he said mockingly while looking at Butcher. The air grew tense. Butcher pulled out a knife and pointed it at Shigaraki. Don't mess with us, or you'll pay dearly, he warned. The silence was interrupted by the sound of a small rock falling. Butcher went on the attack. Shigaraki got into a defensive stance, and Kurogiri also prepared himself. Butcher lunged at Shigaraki with a quick move, but Shigaraki dodged the knife and touched Butcher's face with his five fingers. Butcher instantly died, while Kurogiri created portals to immobilize Jack by breaking his hands so he couldn't use his quirk. Jack fell to the ground but maintained his elegant posture. He he, you're filthy, but I know something. What you're trying to do with that kid won't work because his soul will always be a hero. Why don't you just die? Shigaraki said, putting his hand on Jack's face, making him disappear. Sorry, there shouldn't have been any witnesses, he said with a disturbing smile. Kurogiri, get the kid and take us out of here. Kurogiri nodded and opened portals to retrieve Midoriya, while Shigaraki stepped into a portal along with Kurogiri. Slash slash police station slash slash. At the police station, the Bakugo family was giving details about their family members. They had already interviewed Bakugo's parents, and now it was Bakugo's turn. Hello, Bakugo. I'm Detective Tsukuchi, he said with a slight smile. Hello. Bakugo responded simply. Let's start with the questions, Tsukuchi said, pulling out a notebook. What was Midoriya to you? Bakugo sighed. When we were four years old, we were best friends until. They told him he was quirkless. I see. Tsukuchi noted. And what did you do when you found out? Bakugo lowered his head. When I got my quirk, I became very arrogant. I felt superior, especially to Izuku because he had no quirk. I started to see him as worthless and began insulting and hitting him. Tsukuchi stopped writing and looked at Bakugo in silence for a moment. He sighed and asked, Do you regret what you did? Bakugo clenched his fists and remembered the last time he saw Deku. Yes, 
he replied, tears welling up. What was the last thing you did before he? Before he died? The detective asked, staring at the gray-haired boy. Bakugo was silent for a few seconds, then sighed, letting some tears fall. I hurt him badly. I was a coward and had no mercy on him, he said, crying more. Calm down, kid, Sukuchi said, placing a hand on Bakugo's shoulder. No one blames you for his death, he tried to comfort him. But before he died, the last thing he saw was a severe beating from his childhood friend, Bakugo said, struggling to hold back tears. Calm down, Sukuchi said, pulling out a notebook from his bag. I managed to recover this, he said, showing Izuku's notebooks where he had written down the quirks of each hero. I bet he would have wanted his childhood friend to have these. Bakugo took the notebooks and noticed his own analysis inside. Seeing how detailed it was made Bakugo start to cry. I was such an idiot, he whispered, covering his face with his hands. Calm down, you can go now, Tsukuchi said, pointing to the door. Bakugo stood up but turned to look at the detective before leaving. Before I go, Bakugo asked, can I ask you something? Sure, you can ask me anything, Tsukuchi replied, watching Bakugo. Can I still be a hero even though I insulted and hit my childhood friend, and abandoned him when he needed me? Bakugo asked, tears streaming down his face. Tsukuchi stood up and placed his hands on Bakugo's shoulders. Kid, we're all human. We make mistakes. What's important is to fix those mistakes and move forward. My answer is yes, you can still be a hero. Use this as a lesson to better yourself and help others. Keep striving, he said with a smile. Bakugo nodded, clenched his fists, and sighed. I swear this will never happen again. I'll try to change and help others no matter who they are, Bakugo said. Thank you, detective, he bowed and left the room, drying his tears. Tsukuchi looked at Bakugo's retreating figure when his phone buzzed with a message. Compañero, sir, I have news from the DNA tests. There's something unusual we need to discuss in person. Tsukuchi, on my way. The detective left the interrogation room and saw the Bakugo family waiting. He paused and said. Please accept my deepest condolences for the loss of your friend. I hope you can get through this difficult time, he said, his tone somber. Thank you, Mitsuki replied, tears still in her eyes. May I ask a question? Of course, Tsukuchi said, raising his head. When will we get Inko and Izuku's bodies? She asked, her eyes serious. Don't worry, you can come by tomorrow to collect them. The police station will cover the cost of the funeral and burial, Tsukuchi assured her. Thank you so much, Mitsuki said, managing a small smile as tears fell. I'm sorry, but I must leave now, Tsukuchi said, turning away and heading for the laboratory. Slash slash elsewhere in Japan slash slash. Shigaraki and Kurogiri arrived at a laboratory surrounded by Nomus in capsules. Question mark, you took too long, Shigaraki, a figure said, looking at Shigaraki. I'm sorry. The contractors didn't make it easy, Shigaraki responded, looking at the doctor. It's fine, as long as you brought the boy, the doctor said. Kurogiri opened a portal, and from it, the unconscious green-haired Izuku appeared. Perfect, I can finally complete my project, the doctor said, observing Izuku on the floor. Put him on a bed. We need to wait for him to wake up. Slash slash police station laboratory slash slash. What did you find, partner? Tsukuchi asked. The body of Inko Midoriya shows signs of torture and was apparently tied up. As for Izuku's body. It's a fake. It's actually a criminal who escaped from prison a month ago, his partner replied, checking the test results. So, Izuku Midoriya wasn't killed but kidnapped. But why? According to the reports, neither Inko nor Izuku owed anyone anything. This goes beyond a simple robbery or murder. Let's keep this case confidential. It's more complex than we thought, Tsukuchi said as his partner handed him the papers and left the room, leaving Tsukuchi deep in thought. Slash slash the next day slash slash. Izuku Midoriya finally woke up. My head hurts so much. Where am I? He looked around. My mother, he remembered finding her. That image would never leave him. Tears started to well up in his eyes. Suddenly, the door to the room opened, and Izuku panicked. Hey, you're finally awake, said a voice Izuku recognized immediately. The light in the room was turned on, revealing the figure's face. Why you? Izuku started to sweat, realizing who it was. You're the doctor who told me to give up. What am I doing here? What do you want from me? With each passing second, Izuku's fear grew. Garaki, 
the doctor, said, my name is Garaki. Don't worry, you'll get your answers in time. For now, just rest a bit more. I'll see you this afternoon. He left the room, leaving Izuku alone in the dark. His body still ached, and he couldn't sleep. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw the image of his mother. Slash slash later that day slash slash. Slash slash police station slash slash. Mitsuki waited to collect the bodies of Inko and Izuku Midoriya. Good afternoon, ma'am, Tsukuchi said with a nod. Mitsuki looked exhausted, with large dark circles under her eyes and her eyes red from crying. Hello. She replied weakly. Tsukuchi felt a deep sympathy for her. He took a deep breath. I'm very sorry for your loss. The bodies are in the caskets, ready for the final farewell. However, you won't be able to see their faces for obvious reasons, he explained, watching as Mitsuki shed more tears. As long as we can say our goodbyes at the funeral, she said, wiping away her tears. All right, let's go. They must be waiting, Tsukuchi said, and they headed toward the funeral. Slash slash elsewhere in Japan slash slash. After resting and easing his pain a bit, Izuku tried to get out of bed but found himself pulled back by a chain. What? He wondered, trying to free himself with no success. Why did they chain me? Just then, the door opened, and the lights came on, revealing Garaki with a small TV. Sit down, Izuku, Garaki instructed. Izuku sat down reluctantly. What do you want from me? How did I get here? A voice said, Hello, Izuku. Izuku felt a shiver run down his spine. Who? Who are you? He asked, trembling. Forgive my manners, the figure said. I'm all for one. Don't worry, I won't harm you like the others. Izuku asked, the others? Yes, the ones who were supposed to be your friends, all for one said, showing a picture of Bakugo. Even your favorite hero betrayed you, he added, showing a picture of All Might. No one cares about you, and the only one who believed in you was your mother, who died at the hands of villains with no heroes to help her. She died in the cruelest way. Izuku lowered his head and asked, then why did you save me? All for one responded, that's a simple question. I see potential in you. I see someone who wants to move forward. But I'm quirkless, Izuku said, still with his head down. I'm useless to you. All for one chuckled. Don't worry about that. I have a proposition for you. If I could give you a quirk, but you would have to endure great suffering, almost to the point of death, would you accept? If you survive, you'd become very powerful. Izuku hesitated, thoughts racing through his mind. You're just worthless. I'm sorry, Izuku. I'm so sorry. Poor kid, born quirkless. If you want a quirk, jump off a building and try your luck in the next life. Just die already. Funeral of Inoko Midoriya and Izuku Midoriya. We see Bakugo's family at the cemetery giving their final farewell, while the detective watches from afar. I'm sorry for not telling the truth, but I promise I will find who's responsible and also find Midoriya alive, thought Tsukuchi, who was sitting in a corner of the room. From a distance, the father could be heard praying, while the Bakugo family sat quietly, and Mitsuki was crying. Lord, grant eternal peace to these souls, let them enter your kingdom and become pure and kind souls. After the final words, he proceeded to bury the bodies. Mitsuki approached Inko Midoriya's coffin and placed flowers on it, while Bakugo just stared at Izuku's coffin and clenched his fists. Meanwhile, in another part of Japan. Wonderful choice, you made a wise decision, said with a smile, while Izuku was unsure of his decision. You won't regret it, I assure you, Garaki said, watching the green-haired boy who had a serious and sad face. Don't worry, I'm leaving you in the hands of the doctor, one of the smartest people in Japan. Doctor, begin when you're ready. Understood, the doctor said, turning to Izuku. Let's explain how the treatment will go. I'm leaving now. Remember, Izuku, work hard, and the TV turned off, leaving everything in silence until the doctor decided to speak. Well, kid, your treatment will be like this. First, we need to improve your muscle mass. But we only have a year for this, and we don't have much time. He said seriously, looking at the green-haired boy. Izuku bowed his head and shed some tears. I'm sorry for not being useful. Relax, kid. I'll put you in a capsule, and you'll be asleep for a whole month. It will hurt a lot at first, but as you adjust, your body will get stronger, Garaki explained, watching the boy. Izuku lifted his gaze. Anyway, I have nothing to lose. He replied coldly, but with some tears still present. Okay, take off the bandages and shirt, 
and when you're ready, come out and don't touch anything. Garaki approached and removed the chain from Izuku's foot. See you outside. The doctor left the room, leaving the green-haired boy alone. Author's note, by the way, there's only one year left before the UA entrance exams, so at this moment, Izuku is 14 years old. Izuku took off his shirt, revealing his scarred body. He then tried to remove the bandages, but it hurt a lot because the wounds were still open. Come on, Izuku Midoriya, be brave and take off the bandages, Izuku managed to remove the bandage from his foot and screamed in pain but succeeded. Damn. This hurts so much, he then took off the bandage from his shoulder, which also hurt a lot. This hurts a lot, the wounds began to bleed, but Izuku stood up with difficulty and walked toward the doctor. This hurts so much. I have to be strong. I won't fail again. Kid, I'm surprised you managed to take off the bandages. These are deep wounds, and you're bleeding a lot. Let's start. Calm down, doctor. I have worse injuries anyway. The green-haired boy's personality was changing. Though it had only been a day since his mother's death, he was becoming very serious and cold. It seemed he loved his mother deeply, and losing her felt like losing his own life. Garaki was silent for a moment, then he looked up and pointed to a capsule. Get in there. Izuku obeyed and walked to the machine. He stood firm, though his wounds hurt a lot. He didn't cry. Garaki approached, attaching several tubes to Izuku's body, setting up a heart monitor, and placing two special syringes on his head along with an oxygen mask. Are you ready? Izuku closed his eyes and remembered his mother's death, the abuse he endured since he was four, and how society had abandoned him. He had suffered so much and always kept his head down, but this time he could change things. He opened his eyes with more seriousness. The shy look was gone, and his eyes were now empty. Yes. Garaki closed the capsule, pressed a button, and green liquid began to pour out. This liquid was acidic, starting from Izuku's feet and covering his entire body. Izuku began to scream in pain while the oxygen mask was on his face. The liquid covered him completely, and he felt like he was melting inside and out. The pain was immense. Relax, kid. You're going to sleep soon and the pain will stop, Garaki said, placing his hand on the capsule. Let the project begin. Izuku lost consciousness, and the last thing he saw was the doctor's face with a sinister smile. One month later. At the police station. Detective Tsukuchi was looking at photos on a wall, investigating Izuku Midoriya's case. A month missing and I have no leads. The detective was very frustrated. He hadn't found anything until suddenly he had an idea. Think. Think. Got it. How could I be so stupid? If they escaped by car, there should be security cameras along the route. Tsukuchi immediately grabbed his phone and called his colleague. Colleague, what do you need, Tsukuchi? Tsukuchi, hi. I need a favor regarding the case. Colleague, sure, tell me the favor and I'll see what I can do. Tsukuchi, I need a court order to access the security cameras. Can you get it? Colleague, yes, I'll have it ready by this afternoon. Why do you need it? Tsukuchi, because that's our next lead. In another part of Japan. We see Izuku still in the capsule. Suddenly, Garaki and a small nomu enter the lab. The doctor stood in front of Izuku and looked at him. He he, kid, I'm impressed. This muscle enhancing treatment is only tolerated by 1% of people. I definitely chose the perfect body for my experiment. It's time to wake up, Izuku Midoriya. He took out a remote with several buttons and pressed one. The green liquid slowly disappeared, and the syringes were removed. Thanks to the green liquid, all of Izuku's scars vanished. Izuku fell to the floor, and the doctor crouched down to check his condition. Perfect you exceeded all my expectations. The first experiment passed the test. Now his body has a lot of muscle, five years of physical training compressed into one month. Wonderful. Nomu, pick up Izuku and take him to his room. The Nomu picked up Izuku's body and vanished from the doctor's sight. Now we wait for him to wake up. The next step is to get him used to his body. I'll teach him hand-to-hand -hand combat and knife handling. I can create a training Nomu, and I have an old friend, Julius, who will help teach martial arts and sword skills. The doctor grabbed his phone and called his friend. At the police station. In the afternoon. Tsukuchi, I got the judge's permission to view the security cameras, said the colleague, holding a signed order. Thanks, I owe you one. Let's see if we can find something, replied Tsukuchi, examining the order. Security cameras. Tsukuchi and his colleague were watching the security footage from the date and time of the incident. 
The issue was that the cameras didn't cover the entire street, but the detective's keen eye spotted a suspicious car. They tracked it on the cameras until it reached a warehouse, and they noted the license plate to find the car's owner. Okay, colleague, get the license plate checked. It might be fake or stolen, but anything helps. I'll head to the abandoned warehouse with a few heroes, Tsukuchi said, noting everything in a notebook. All right, I'll update you if I find anything. But before I go. He extended his hand. Good luck. Tsukuchi shook his hand. You too. They both left the room, taking different paths. Two heroes who are veterans and work at night. I have them, he pulled out his phone and checked the names. I hope they're available. In another part of Japan. Izuku Midoriya, after sleeping for six hours, finally woke up at 6 p.m. When he looked around, everything was blurry from the capsule's effects still in his body. Suddenly, he felt a tremendous pain all over and ran to the bathroom to vomit. The door opened, and Garaki appeared, sitting on Izuku's bed. Relax, kid, that's normal after being in a capsule for a month. Tomorrow, I'll bring someone for you to train with to help you get used to your body, the doctor explained as Izuku continued to vomit. After stopping, Izuku looked up and wiped his mouth. Who is this friend? His head was still spinning. I hate this feeling. He twisted his head to vomit again. Don't worry about it. You'll meet him tomorrow. In the meantime, take this. He tossed a pill for dizziness to Izuku. Garaki then got up and headed for the door but stopped and turned back. Rest up, tomorrow we'll bring another challenge. He left the room. Who could this friend be? Izuku got up from the floor and looked in the mirror. His physique had changed dramatically, now very muscular, but his eyes had lost their emerald color and looked black and lifeless. His personality had also become cold and serious, though he still wanted to be a hero. However, he knew it wouldn't be easy anymore. Izuku shook off his days and his next goal was to put on some clothes. As he dressed, he looked in the mirror again. I look ridiculous. He said to himself. At the abandoned warehouse. Tsukuchi stood with two heroes. Gran Torino. Quirk, Jet, Gran Torino can shoot air from the propellers on the bottom of his feet, giving him incredible jumping ability. However, he can only use the air he has breathed in and can't propel himself very far into the sky. Eraser Head. Quirk, Erase, Erase allows him to nullify the quirks and abilities of his targets simply by looking at them. We see Tsukuchi and the two professional heroes examining the abandoned warehouse outside of Japan. According to the cameras, this was the last place the car was seen. Hello, heroes. Thanks for coming, Tsukuchi said with a nod. I hope it wasn't too much trouble to bring you here. You're some of the few who had some free time. First, it's no trouble at all. It seems you have your reasons. Second, I don't really have free time. I just asked Director Nezu for permission, Aizawa explained with a sleepy tone. Since you brought us here, I assume it's because you have a lead, or am I wrong? The veteran hero asked, looking at the detective. You're right, Gran Torino, Tsukuchi said, looking at the hero. According to the cameras, this is where Izuku was taken, and he hasn't been seen since. He turned his back to the heroes and looked at the warehouse. So there should be a clue here about who kidnapped him. He pointed to the warehouse. I see. So what are we waiting for? Let's go inside, Izawa said, walking cautiously toward the entrance, unsure of what they might find inside. Opening the door slowly and carefully, he didn't see anything dangerous, so he sighed in relief and opened the door fully. Inside, they found an abandoned car, some bloodstains, and signs of a struggle. It looks like they tried to destroy the evidence. They couldn't get rid of everything, but they managed to complicate things, said the veteran, examining the floor and the bloodstains. There was a fight, and something tells me someone died. He looked around. Eraser head crouched down to examine the floor and the evidence more closely. There are signs of a fight. It looks like it was a two-on-two -two situation and it seems one person died while the other two must have escaped with Midoriya, he explained in a sleepy voice. The detective walked over to the car and checked it thoroughly. Unfortunately, he found nothing except a rope. There's nothing here, but they used ropes to restrain the kid, he said. Aizawa got up from the floor, and suddenly a light reflected into his eyes, blinding him for a few seconds. Damn! He said, rubbing his eyes. Something reflected the light. He opened his eyes and followed the reflection to the wall. What Shigaraki didn't know was that when the butcher tried to kill, his knife had flown and stuck into the wall. Eraser head approached and saw the knife. On closer inspection, he recognized it. I'd never forget this knife. It belongs to the butcher. I'd tried to catch him before, but he was too slippery, 
the hero explained, putting on gloves to avoid contaminating the evidence and picking up the knife. But he always worked with his partner, Jack. Gran Torino also recognized the knife. Both had a history of murder and kidnapping, the veteran explained. It looks like the League hired them but then betrayed and killed them to leave no witnesses, Aizawa and Gran Torino observed, holding up a hair from Shigaraki. Currently, we know very little about the League of Villains. But what would they want with the kid? He doesn't seem special, Gran Torino said, tapping his chin. I don't know, but for now, we have this. Izuku Midoriya was kidnapped by two villains. They planted a fake body at his house and burned it to leave no evidence. They were hired by the League of Villains to do the dirty work. But when the deal was supposed to close, Shigaraki and Kurogiri betrayed and killed them, taking Izuku, Tsukuchi said, looking at the heroes. I support that theory too, Gran Torino agreed, observing the detective. Meanwhile, Aizawa was lost in a memory. Flashback. Three years ago, we see the pro hero on a mission against a villain organization dealing in illegal goods. As he entered the place, Eraser Head fought off several villains with ease. Once the area was secured and they were collecting the illegal merchandise, something caught the hero's attention. It was a completely dark room. He decided to enter and turned on the lights, revealing a disturbing sight brains in capsules and various human parts. Eraser Head was shocked by what he saw. There was a book on a table, and he decided to read it. The title was The Perfect Soldier. The pro hero read the book, and each page was more disturbing than the last. The book explained how to create an indestructible soldier using human parts and stolen quirks. The soldier was called Nomu. Aizawa finished the book, deeply impacted. He didn't know what to say or do but was relieved that the last page said these were only tests. The perfect soldier did not yet exist, for now, they were just theories and experiments. End of flashback. Hey! Eraser Head spoke, catching the attention of the two present. Have you heard of the Nomu project? Yes. But why are you mentioning it now? Asked the detective, looking at the pro hero. It's still just a theory, but they've been stealing bodies and quirks to turn them into Nomu. For now, there's no evidence of this so called perfect soldier, Aizawa said, standing up while Gran Torino was in shock. Wait. Are you suggesting that Izuku was kidnapped to turn him into a Nomu? Aizawa nodded. The veteran hero was stunned. Tsukuchi was also shocked. Damn. And we don't know anything about him. This is where our leads end. The detective clenched his fist in frustration. How are we going to find him? We should all use every resource we have to find that kid. If necessary, we'll search all of Japan, Aizawa said, looking at the two. I'll do everything I can. I'll see if I can get more help, said Gran Torino. I'll focus on investigating the League of Villains to see if I find anything, Eraser Head said, nodding along with Gran Torino. Let's find the kid. The three left the warehouse, each taking their own path with one goal, find Izuku Midoriya. The next day. In a place in Japan. Izuku lay in bed, holding a book in his hands. It was one of the few given to him by the doctor. The freckled boy tried to concentrate, but his thoughts kept wandering. Damn it. He muttered, throwing the book on the floor and sitting up. He tried to bend his foot, but the chain on his ankle made it impossible. The green-haired boy sighed. Sleeping won't hurt. He lay back down and closed his eyes. Flashback. Izuku. Shaking his young son, Izuku. Increasing the force to make him open his eyes slowly. What? The little freckled boy opened his tender eyes, meeting a sweet gaze. Get up, son, it's time to eat, his mother said with a small smile. But immediately, the green-haired boy pulled the blanket over himself. I don't want to. He said with a hint of defiance, though to his mother it seemed cute. Don't want to? No response from the little one. Come on, Izuku, get up, she said again, getting the same answer. His mother grabbed him firmly and pulled him with more strength. No. Let go. The little boy clung tightly to the bed. Inko used more force, but suddenly felt her hand slipping and fell to the floor. I said I don't want to. The little boy curled up with the blanket. Izuku. His mother shouted angrily, but got no response. She sat on the floor with crossed arms, looking around until she noticed an All Might doll. I know. She sat back on the bed, placing her hand on Izuku's body. Son, come eat. She said calmly. How do you expect to be like All Might if you don't eat? She felt her son looking at her through the blanket. How will you protect others if you don't take care of yourself? I. The little boy pulled the blanket off, revealing only his eyes. It doesn't matter. 
a hero doesn't depend on food. Oh, really? Then why does All Might need to eat? The little boy fell silent. Inko turned her back to her son. It's your choice, but think about it. She glanced at Izuku with a small smile. If you don't want to eat, that's fine, but who will protect me? She turned and walked away. Suddenly, a small breeze rustled her hair, and she turned to see the blanket flying through the air and her son running toward it. I. He jumped slightly. I. Stretching his arms, while Inko smiled. I. He hugged his mother, who received him with open arms. I protect you. Izuku suddenly opened his eyes, gasping for air, sweat covering his body, and tears streaming down his face. He looked around, completely confused. No. He covered his face with his hands. Calm down, Izuku, it was just a dream. He sat up in bed, staring at his hands. Am I trembling? The image of his mother smiling appeared in his mind, and tears flowed even more. What am I doing? How did I get here? I just wanted. He clenched his fists. I just wanted to be a hero. Midoriya was overwhelmed by a sea of emotions, hitting every part of his body. It was normal, as he had lost what he called life less than a week ago. The memories of his mother tortured him constantly. Suddenly, the door to his room opened, pulling Izuku from his thoughts. Hey, kid. An old man's voice called out. The green-haired boy looked up. Your rest time is over. He tossed a bag onto the bed. There's your suit. Put it on quickly and come to the training room. He unlocked the door. Put it on fast and come to the training room. He left the room, leaving Izuku alone. The green-haired boy shook his head and looked at the bag. Remember why you're doing this. He sighed deeply. Can I still be a hero? Training field. Izuku, I didn't know there was a training field here. Hiraki, of course, there is. How do you think I test my Nomu? But I didn't come to talk about that. In the field, there's a Nomu set from level 1 to 5. You just need to choose the difficulty level. I also brought an old friend, Julius, who will help you with knife skills and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Julio's, hola, he said, bowing. Izuku, sensei, he said, bowing and then looking at the doctor. Doctor, I have a question. Garaki, yes, go ahead. Izuku, why are you training me? Garaki, first, to help your body adjust to your new muscular form. Second, remember who saved you, and we're also giving you quirks, so you owe us favors. Izuku, yes, you're right, doctor. I'm sorry for asking. He said apologetically. Garaki, it's okay. Now, it's time to train. You have one week, and after that, the final test for your quirks will begin. One week later. Izuku has spent the entire week training with Julius and the practice Nomu. Although the Nomu wasn't too strong, level 5 was the most dangerous, comparable to a common pro hero's power. For Izuku, who was still adjusting to his new body, it was very painful. Fighting Julius always left him with scars. Today is the last day of training. Izuku stands in the middle of the training field, holding a katana, sweating and bleeding. The Nomu is on the left in a combat stance, while Julius is on the right, holding a sword and pointing it at Izuku. Izuku, my body can't take it anymore, he gasps, I need to stay alert, they might attack at the same time, let the party begin. The Nomu is the first to attack. It leaps, causing the ground to crack from the powerful jump, and attempts to land on Izuku. Izuku dodges easily, leaping backward. However, Julius remains behind and starts attacking Izuku, who tries to block Julius's strikes, leading to a sword fight. Julius, with more combat experience, delivers a blow with his elbow to Izuku's stomach and another to his head, sending Izuku flying. Izuku quickly recovers from the hit and stands up to dodge the Nomu's blows. But exhausted, he fails to evade one attack and is slammed against the wall. Izuku spits blood from the impact and collapses to the ground, badly injured, but miraculously still on his feet, his head lowered and blood dripping onto the floor. Izuku, I. Can still fight. He tries to take a step but collapses, unconscious. 